Hello everyone, today we will show you a very interesting decor option that can open up a variety of possibilities for your cake if you just experiment a little with the ingredients. First let's frost the cake with cream cheese frosting. On our channel you can find a detailed video on how to easily and quickly frost a cake. Frosting always starts with the crumb coat. Remember that the main thing at this stage is to give the cake the right shape and lock in all the crumbs. While the crumb coat is setting in the refrigerator, let's prepare the colors for the final coat. Creating a beautiful color always means playing with different shades. Our main color will be pink. Part of this pink frosting we will then turn into a darker lilac. This will be our second shade. To make the first shade of powdery pink, add the following water soluble food colors one by one. Red, dusty rose, and pink. The colors should be added in small drops. If you added too much of one color, just remove some of it along with the surrounding frosting. If the resulting shade needs adjusting, you can do that by adding any or one of the colors. In this case, it's better to add it with the help of a toothpick. Our first color turned out pleasant, complex, and with the right degree of powderiness, as our team likes to say. Now let's place some of this frosting in a separate bowl and add blueberry food color to achieve the desired shade of lilac. Don't forget that frosting needs to be colored very quickly to not melt in the process. If you feel that the frosting is becoming too liquid, put it in the refrigerator for some time. Now that the crumb coat has set, let's move on to the final coat. The top of the cake we will cover with our first shade of frosting. Spread the frosting a little beyond the edge of the top, then move down from the top to the sides of the cake. Spread the frosting down to about the middle of the cake, then take the second shade and apply a narrow strip of frosting along the bottom edge of the cake. The gap between the colors we will fill with our first shade of frosting. At this stage, a smooth transition is not necessary. You can even make a wave-like border of the colors. Now let's smooth out the sides of the cake with a scraper. We're just evening out the sides, so don't apply too much pressure. To get a gradient transition from one color to another, just lead the scraper upwards while smoothing. This way some of the lilac frosting will partially overlap the pink. Now clean off the scraper and go over the side of the cake a final time. One of the special things about this decor is that you don't need to smooth out the top edge. We call that excess frosting on top the crown. It will add certain individuality to our cake. Afterwards we will make a spiral pattern on top. Let's check whether our cake is centered on the turntable. Then apply the offset spatula to the center of the cake and start rotating the turntable. 
the spatula should move from the center of the cake to its edge in a straight line. Sometimes the spiral comes out too narrow, sometimes it's too wide. In any case, you can always smooth out the top with a scraper and try again. Once you've got your pattern, go over the sides with a clean scraper once more and raise up the sides of the crown. The final coat is ready. Now we can put the cake in the refrigerator to set and prepare the actual decor. For the decor, we will use fresh flowers, fresh berries, and pistachio kernels. Before inserting the flowers on the cake, we will need to trim them leaving 3 to 5 centimeters of the stem and wrap them in floral tape. This will prevent the stem from coming in direct contact with the cake and will help the flower stay fresh longer. You can also wrap the stems in cling film. The berries should be washed and well dried. Our cake has set. Now we can release our artistic nature and begin to create. First, choose the most beautiful and appetizing part of the cake to be the front. Then begin installing the decor in the form of an neat crescent. Decorating always starts with the largest and most voluminous details, so we will start with the roses. Insert the flowers so that they point in different directions. This will give the decor a more natural look. Then move on to the largest berries, the blackberries. Lay them out randomly at different angles. Keep in mind what you want your cake to look like in the end, and lay out the berries accordingly. Blackberries can be grouped in two to three depending on their size. Don't forget to space the berries, this will make the decor seem lighter. Then move on to the smaller berries, the blueberries. Use tweezers to place them on the cake neatly without leaving fingerprints. Fill in all the empty spaces of the crescent. Now it's time to add a little magic to our decor. In the art of cake baking, like in many other areas of life, details mean everything. They are not only a method of self-expression, but they are also what raises the value of the product in the eyes of the customer. So if you want to add extra volume to decor, you can use smaller flowers. And as a final touch, we will add some pistachios. Look at how bright and at the same time refined our cake turned out. It radiates elegance and harmony, and the floral and berry decor create just the right volume. Imagine how many variations of this decor you can create by combining different shades of frosting, flowers, and berries. The possibilities are endless, and each cake will look elegant, aesthetic, and refined. Now let's see what's hiding inside. This berry banana flavored cake is just as delicate and beautiful on the inside as it is on the outside. It's one of those flavors that are equally loved by both children and adults. The combination of caramel banana and berry marmalade is simply out of this world. I'll be glad to see you at our course where we'll teach you how to make all of our popular flavors approved by hundreds of our customers. You can sign up below this video. I believe you'll do great. Thank you for watching and subscribing to our channel. Bye bye. See you soon.